Our first tip for this video has to do with storage. Now, this is very helpful in terms of when you find extra things while mining or where you have extra items from crash sites you may have discovered. Now, items in while they could be used in the future and aren't really necessary at the moment need to be stored. Now, as you can see here, we're using resin to expand the node in a predefined area that we wanted our storage in. So you're going to need a ton of resin for each node that you want, and then you're going to need a ton of compound for each module of the storage facility. So obviously some of you have used storage in the past. You make it in a printer, and each storage piece can hold about uh, eight different items. So you can put one storage piece on each module that you have, or each node on the storage system. So on the storage system over here, we have about uh, eight or so, and we can store eight different modules. So in turn, that'll give us 64 spaces to be able to store a bunch of items. So for the second tip on the video, we're actually using the rover and the truck in tandem, where the rover is being the power supply for the truck. Now, as you can see, it is connected by the black cable. We're putting a solar panel on there. And we're also putting a wind turbine on there. Now, this system is more practical for the daytime because you're relying on the solar energy and wind. Now, you always have the constant solar energy because of the sun, but not always the wind. And that's when this becomes a problem in nighttime because you're more reliant on the wind energy, which isn't always constant. Now, this system actually has a lot of power to it, while the truck can also be supplied from the rover's battery. So, you actually shouldn't be that bad in nighttime unless you get zero wind and you're driving constantly. That might be an issue but you can always rely on this system to help you. Now you can also attach more rovers on the back for extra storage, but obviously that slows your system down over time. This is very, very good for exploration and bringing research items back, and that's why it's a very, very good pro tip. Now, while our third pro tip might be debatable, it's actually very helpful when you look in the eyes of it. Now, a lot of people use the wind vane and solar on their back, when in reality, they can just hook it up to the system and instead use a portable battery and a oxygen tank on their back. Now the battery is very helpful for obviously lengthening your power supply, but the oxygen take is very helpful for when you want to explore off the tethers and you just need that extra oxygen boost. And the battery also very helpful for when you want to pump out a little bit extra power when you're digging something up. Our fourth pro tip deals with setting up a base or another uh, habitat in space. Setting habitat because you will need one of those as a sort of setup place or a spawn point for when you are settling another planet. You're going to obviously need a lot of research and compound, but then you're going to print out the habitat and put it on the back of your shuttle. Now, once you land on this other planet, you're obviously going to first refuel your rocket or your shuttle, and then you're going to take your habitat and move it to a flat space on the planet, just like on Terran. Now, a flat space is very important because you're going to want to extend those other nodes off of the, obviously, the habitat where you put it on. The habitat's very essential because it provides a beacon in space, so when you're traveling between planets, you're able to see where you want to land, where, I guess, where your home is, or your other base on the other planets. So just like setting up a base on Terran, you're going to want to bring your resin and compound and set up those different type of modules. It's very helpful and very essential for settling. Our fifth and final tip for this video deals with creating a battery array. Now this is very helpful and practical for the times of night when you don't have any solar or wind access and when you're doing things that are very dependent on power like creating hydrazine out of the fuel condenser or researching items. Now you're going to need two parts of lithium, very hard to find on Terran, but on Arid it is very abundant. So once you settle a place like that, using our last tip with the habitat, you'll be very good to go. Now you're going to set up the batteries, place them on the nodes in an array, kind of like you see on the screen, like you did with the storage area, and they'll be able to be powered. Now, as you can see in this clip, it is not powered by the solar energy, this is actually using organic out of the generator. You can also utilize coal out of a generator, and also the solar and wind energy. This is very, very helpful for nighttime operations, and hopefully you guys enjoyed these five tips. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, I really enjoyed making it. If you guys have uh, any other pro tips you'd like to include in another video that I might make if I get enough likes, maybe, 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 and put it in the comments section if you guys knew or didn't know of any, also leave that in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace!